Scorpio, hi, please come in, make yourself comfortable. It's great to see you. Oh, do you know, I have a little bit of sad news. I was just uh, earlier today, I was called into um, a hospice, not far from where I live, to provide comfort to a lady uh, who was about to cross over into the other side. And on the drive back, I heard uh, from her family that she had indeed done so. So it's very difficult uh, for the family in these sort of circumstances. I know that I'm very aware of it. You may well have had the loss of someone that's close to you and found it difficult, but she's on the next stage of her journey. And, and who knows, hopefully she shall, and she's certainly welcome to be with us now as I provide this reading for you. I'm going to use a deck by a San Francisco artist, a young lady called Eden Gallanter. The name of her deck is the Cheminet Tarot deck. Now, I give a plug because young artists often provide great joy to people through their art and yet often find very little by way of financial return uh, in consideration for that joy that they provide to people. So I'm happy to give her the plug. Now I'm going to use the hands of the enterer to bring down the spirit. And there it is, spirit in these cards now for you. Let's see here, did I mention incidentally, and forgive me if I told you before, but your Scorpio 2020 yearly reading is available. I've updated, uh, I've uploaded that. So just uh, key in uh, Nigel Scorpio 2020, and that will take you to the reading. But let's see what there is in store for you for December, shall we? This has come out. The priest, this has come out. The seven of discs. This artwork is, um, is a body of work which I have very good results with, I have to tell you. And uh, it, for me, I don't know why it is, but it invokes uh, the, the consciousness plural on the other side to come down and provide messages for you. So I've got great, I've got great confidence in the accuracy of this reading, which is going to be provided to you. This is whatever this happens to be, the 10 of cups. Now, let's see what there is here now, just to finish it off, shall we? And then what I'll do is the Empress. That's a pretty card, I must say. The Empress. Oh, well, they're all very nice. <laughs> they're all very good. You seem to have dislodged yourself from the rest. The Princess of Swords. My God, aren't you an attractive woman? Well, in a purely artistic way, of course. Now, let us uh, see what there is in store for you. Come down, sit down next to me together so that you can, because it's important to have a look at the, the imagery on the cards while I provide the reading for you. Okay, here we go. Absolutely fascinating spread of cards. Just give me one second. Okay, let's go and look at this one first, shall we? And this is called the priest who is blindfolded and holds a scythe. And this figure sitting at the foot of the priest is, well, what I imagine to be a very young ver version of probably the priestess. Well, the priest, um, he is a gateway to the powerful truths that lie inside you and are completely blasphemous to any who believe you need something external for redemption, salvation, happiness, an immortal soul or life after death. He is a monster to those who fear their own power. He is a devil to those who fear the vision of their true self or the uninitiated. What am I getting around him here? The Magus of the Eternal Gods, Venus in Taurus with the Moon Exalted. Let me just pull him out a bit so we can see him here. Yeah, very much getting Venus in Taurus with the Moon Exalted. I think 
Do you know, I think, um, if you are not a teacher, a counsellor or a consultant at the moment, then you could very well act as an amateur teacher, consultant or therapist to somebody because I think people will be coming towards you and asking your advice during this period and I think that the advice that you give them is going to be very good. Taurus, yes, Venus in Taurus. Well, Taurus is Earth and that emphasizes the importance of applying your spiritual realizations in the day-to-day -day world as he really links the two, the spirit and the carnal. You know, there's nothing esoteric really about living the spiritual life. It is just being with God because God isn't a person or an object somewhere. The divinity is being itself. And all you have to do is just go through your daily life and just be aware of that that everywhere you turn, every place you look, there you will find the face of the divinity. Well, I'm not here to sell religion, but these words are coming through. How are you now, my husband, that is my bride? What word must I remember? Nail me to the door of your enemy, to the door of the marketplace, to the door of your tomb, that Naked and unknowing, even I may be a sign of your devotion to all your lovers. Yeah, I think that this probably also recognizes, I think that there is. For you, during this period, don't go setting about any revolutions in anything. Don't go upturning the apple cart. Kind of go with the flow of things, both internally and in your external life and in your workplace. I think there is, just for the moment anyway, the need to follow rules and traditions that are in your life and in the society. I think that this may well turn out to be a period of quite intense education for you. And that could be in, in the way of a trade or by going to, looking to see whether or not you might take up night school or something like that. I think that if you are in a large organization, if you are in sales, if you are in retail, if you are in education, if you are in healthcare, I think that this is possibly going to be, well, in fact, not possibly, this is going to be a very good period for you. I think that you may well also find that you have a, mm, well, Group identity is the feeling that I'm getting, is that you are going to have a, a connection with groups and have a feeling and draw support from group activities and group analysis, uh, arrangements that may be family or it may be related to work or in your social life. I think that you'll get um, quite good support from group, group activities. Certainly learning and teaching is what I'm getting around here, so I think you could, as I said earlier, be passing on your very good advice to other people. You know, I think that this is someone who is gifted at imparting information and inspiring others, and I think that this is what is going to happen to you during this period. You'll be committed very much to the concept of community. Um, Interestingly, for some reason, the energy that's coming up here is that I think you're going to be very attracted to music, to sound, and you'll recognize and appreciate sound in all its various forms and from all its various sources during this period. Yeah, I know that sounds a bit left field, but nevertheless, that is the energy that I'm getting, and it's coming from these other cards as well. You'll be good at listening and speaking and you'll want to make your ideas tangible and usable. I think you'll also want to be challenged by new experiences, and I think you'll be looking to bring those new experiences around and, and put in place the motions to start exploring new experiences in this period and then going into the new year. I think what um, I would have in mind during this period is that 
There is only one voice worth listening to, the voice of my own heart. I honor the sacred within me. I am inspired by learning and teaching. I am creative and productive in my family and professional life. Yeah, you'll be very good at um, speaking. You'll have the gift of the gab, as they sometimes call it, that, um, well, certainly not snake oil, good at selling snake oil, but you will be very, very good at getting ideas across and putting across your point of view on things, even if they are, in some respects, uh, well, dare I say it, uh, kind of indefensible. You'll, you'll nevertheless have the ability to get your own way with the power of your words and the way that you express yourself. Here we have the Empress underneath him. Now, here we go. The Empress, there she is. Um, the daughter of the Mighty Ones. Very much Venus around her. Look at these stars here. They're in the shape of a heart, I suppose, and this links her in with the eternal. These doves here have an association with Venus, and so I very much do get the planet Venus here. And she is the female counterpart of the Emperor. Now, where her mm, genitals are, there is her hair has formed a spiral galaxy. And of course, we live in a spiral galaxy, don't we? The Milky Way. It's just that we can't make it out with the naked eye, because we're told by the astronomers that that's what the case is. Because when we look out with the naked eye, we're just looking directly into it. And she's standing on this island in the ocean. Well, there are two major mother archetypes in the first few minor, arc the major arcana rather, the high priestess who is cold and remote, the empty void or ocean. And then there is the empress who is warm, nurturing and overflowing with diversity and abundance. The Empress isn't just the mother to a single child. She is the symbol of the mother of everything, the abundance and fertility of creation. And she carries all things across the void of creation and into the world of manifestation. She, in effect, carries you as a child in her body, covering you with her flesh and takes you across the threshold from spirit to matter. She carries you out of the other mode of being and into the brightness of the sun. Well, what is she saying to me? What is she saying? I'm really getting here that you may well have, um, you may well hear of pregnancy during this period. Because she appears to me to be preeminently fertile. So I think you may well be hearing of pregnancy here. And I think you'll be getting in touch with the, the beauty, the beautiful things that are in your life. I also get the feeling that you may well be exploring a relationship with your mother or with a maternal figure. Although, as she is placed underneath this priest, and as we have a male figure here uh, in juxtaposition to her, I think that you could also be experiencing a relationship or conducting relationship with a father or with a father figure. You may also be acting as a mother figure or a father figure to somebody else, where they come almost downhearted, um, crying and seeking your support. But isn't that what this was also saying to us as well? So I think that uh, your, your good sense is going to be called on in this period, for sure. I think that what we have here is that this, this is reminding you also that spirituality is expressed from the heart and not from the head, and you'll be very good 
at nurturing other people. And in particular, I think that you will also be very good, and sensibly so, nurturing yourself. Because the thing is, you give out so much of yourself, don't you? You give so much of yourself away to others in work, in emotional support. And it's almost as if every time you do that, that a small piece of you is given away. And so I think that this is a time where you will be coming to nurture yourself and to reintegrate those parts of yourself which may have silently slipped away. Oh, you are about me and through me. Your kisses are all at once in all places. The moist folds of your skin are open and engulfing and devouring the whole of me. Yet I am the gate and the shaft of your burning and luminous love impales me and rips me and feeds me, even as your mouth, your touch, your womb swallows me up. I think you'll be looking to balancing emotions during this period. It's going to be a very highly creative time for you. Now, you look to yourself to see in which area you have that creative spark, and I think that this is one that's going to be very positive towards that creativity. And it's certainly a time when I think that you'll be coming to own your own leadership ability, and other people are going to see that leadership ability in you. And this is really going to be as a example, as, as a result of the example of your character and your poise and your bearing. I have these thoughts in mind, and it is, I am filled with power and beauty. I value the healing power of beauty, harmony, and love. I give and receive wisely. I realize that the capacity to receive is equally as powerful as the capacity to give. Okay, let's see what else we might have here. I think I'm going to turn to this card here, which is this, Seven of Discs. Now, this Seven of Discs, generally sevens can be quite, um, can be quite difficult, I think, but let's have a look at some of the elements that are on this card. The, the horse's head, so it's very much a, a, a situation of matter to me, of, of humanity, of the real world. It is um, a horse, of course. The flower just underneath the horse is in the shape of a mandala, which is a Tibetan Buddhist um, sacred object that's used to focus the mind in meditation and to achieve spirituality. And here are the seven discs above the horse, and the seven discs almost represent a halo. Now the halo in art became popular, certainly in, in Christian, well, in, in Catholic art, I suppose, from about um, the 300s and onwards. And certainly in Eastern Orthodox art, it's still very prevalent. And, and in the East, both in Buddhism and Hinduism, it's seen as a sign of divinity. In Eastern Orthodox, the halo is seen as uncreated light, uncreated God being around the person. And in the Catholic tradition, the halo was seen as the, the infusion of the divine into the soul of the person. Now, what do I have here? I have this very much a sense of horse here, very much sense of earth. And so, and of course, I've got that number seven, which I'm aware of. I see Saturn in the third decan, the last 10 degrees of Taurus, about the 11th of the 20th of May. Saturn is the slow moving and restricting planet and Taurus, is a plodding fixed earth sign and together they can lead to stagnation and so there is a feeling here is that i think there could be a time now this isn't going to be going on for the whole of the month and it's not a sentence but this is a 
This is a time that if you do ever have a feeling of stagnation during this period, to be able to detach, to look back and go, well, look, I understand what it is and I know not to be concerned by it. And I know now what to do about the situations that surround these feelings of stagnation. What has happened is, is a response to whatever has been going on in my mind. I think what's happening here is that, look, I, in many respects, I call this card the, the Lord of unfulfilled success. So it is success which is yet to come. It just hasn't been filled at the moment, I'm thinking. So it could be from a practical point of view that there are delays in payments. You could be looking for long term results on something rather than thinking that you're going to start a project and then bang, it's going to be finished within a day or two. I think what we're seeing here is during this month, and even if we're talking about the creativity and undertaking creative projects, that um, there is this feeling, I think, that there's going to be slow but steady growth. Possibility, again, that I'm getting of having to wait for money and maybe working through something of a dry spell. Really, I think that you, you might feel that your ability to deal with things is being blocked. And um, well, what you need to do, of course, is step back and analyze it because it's not the end of the world by any means at all. I think what we can also say about this card is this, that, well, of course, the card suggests a difficult period, I think, a period, not forever, in your material affairs. And material affairs is not just money, or it's not restricted to money, but it can mean general standard of living and the things that go up to make your, your enjoyment of life, I think. It's almost like you, you might feel like you have put everything into something and haven't got a result. And you, as a result, just kind of stop trying. And the energy is, re is really just sitting there. It hasn't dissipated. The energy is still there. It needs to be pushed on to, to come to, it needs to be pushed forward again. Um, there's a feeling of inertia and, um, and that feeling of inertia may not disappear overnight. And that's because of the influence I see of Saturn in this card, which is a very slow moving planet. Now, Saturn also partly gives rise to fear and fear is a, is often a big factor, isn't it? In, in delaying your recovery from things that could have happened to you, which you think might have been negative, that you think things are going to repeat themselves. It's that kind of feeling. Now, you'll know what that means. But I think what we can also say is that if you have been trying with somebody in a relationship setting, and you've been trying and trying and trying, and you've been putting out there what you need to get, what you need to get. And now this is not just romantic relationships or partnered relationships, but this could well apply to anything which is in a workplace or in a sales or, a, or, a, or in, a, in a business environment as well. You've been putting in and putting in and putting in and telling them what you need, what you need, and you're just not getting it back. Then it might be a time to just cut your losses and move on. The important thing is, is that everything in your life is happening for a reason so that you can learn from it and move on from it. And it can often take some time in this context for the aha moment to arrive where you go, now that makes sense. I see where I am today. I wouldn't be where I am today had I not had these thoughts, had this not occurred, because I've moved on to other things which are bringing me the life that I have and which I enjoy. And that's the feeling that's coming through there. Have this thought, and it is, I have the courage to believe that all that happens in my life serves for the best. I am willing to release all that is not serving me in my life. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look here at this.
Princess of Swords. What do you have to say? Hello, young woman. Well, what do you make of her? What is the, the impression that you have of this Princess of Swords? Is she somebody who looks happy to you? Is she someone who looks like she is a team player to you? Is she somebody who looks approachable to you? I think what we can say about her is that she brings about the materialization of ideas. So she's very good energy for that. Now, she could also be someone that you know in, in this period, and that person could well be an Aquarius, or it could be a Capricorn, or it could be a Pisces, is the other sign that I'm getting from it. She is a, a young woman, as drawn here, but remember the courts can be equally male or female, so it could be a man, who is stern and revengeful, firm and aggressive, and skilled in the ways of the world. The character of this princess, for me, is really stern and revengeful. Her logic is destructive, and she is firm and aggressive, but she has great practical wisdom and subtlety in material things. She shows great cleverness, I think, and dexterity in the management of day-to-day -day affairs, and, and, and especially if she's very good at, um, at sorting out problems between people. You know, if there's an argument or a controversy, and she's very good at settling arguments and controversies. She is the earth. She's esoterically, she's represented by earth. And in air, she is, uh, which is swords, is air. So, so she's the earthy part of air. Now, earth and air are enemies and they weaken each other. So, so there's conflict in her nature. But the implication of earth in air is that she deals with situations involving the mind, which is swords, in a very tangible way. That is, she can make her thoughts come true and turn them into a reality. And I think that this is clearly something that she's saying that um, is going to be the situation with you during this period. But... She has a destructive way of analyzing things and applying it. Don't you get that feeling from her? Don't you get the feeling that she could be very, be very aggressive and kind of just ride over the top of people? Well, I, I'm certainly getting that energy from her. She, I also get the feeling from her that, and this might relate to those people that I mentioned uh, that you might know who I thought could be, what am I getting? Aquarius or a, or a Capricorn or a Pisces, I get the feeling that she is fighting battles internally and externally. Maybe her moods are clouding her mental clarity at times. It's almost like there's a need for a mood filter and uh, so it can transfer, transform her, her moods and, and get some common sense out of her very very uh some of the time then but nevertheless as i say i mean you know sort of um conversely though she is i think very adroit in settling other people's controversies sometimes she's someone who follows their own bent rather than serving another and in due course it seems like she's chosen right and ultimately gains her rewards. Now this can be following the heart, following a lifestyle, maybe maybe becoming a, a bit of a small business person or yes or starting their own business. It it seems because of the swords suits that she's in that these things won't necessarily be plain sailing from the start, but when she puts them into the into effect and stays with them. I think that she'll have her reward over time. Certainly, if you have any rebellion in you at the moment, I'd say, first of all, I'd, I'd ask you to look to see if your rebellion is rooted in love and say to yourself, my rebellion, therefore, is positive, constructive, and creative. She can be intimidating, um, saying what she thinks, regardless of the consequences. 
and she needs to see that her actions have a pure intent or she could be very damaging. But she is adaptable in thought and in action and um, she can apply herself practically and sensibly, I think, when she's got that mood filter on to a lot of different situations. And finally, let's have a look at the Ten of Cups. Well, the Ten of Cups. The first thing is, is that uh, we'll say is that the tens really are at the end of the suit. And here we have, for me, a king in the middle of that uh, diagram there. And I call him um, the Lord of Perfected Success. Now, what am I getting? I'm getting... I'm getting Mars ruling the last 10 degrees of Pisces, that 9th to the 19th of March. Mars in Pisces. Well, Mars is disruptive, isn't it? And so it conflicts with peaceful Pisces. I think we have an emotional stability with you. Um, your home life, I think, is probably happy during this period. Um, your dreams are becoming a reality here. But Mars in Pisces, we've got that um, we've got that difficulty, and I'm just wondering, is there something that should be is there something that we should be looking out for here? There's a great deal of emotional passion and vitality. But this is a 10. Let's draw it out a bit. This is a 10, and we are a long way away from the Ace, and, and this energy is about to devolve. It's going to go into the Ace of Swords after this. It's, it's a long way away. So there's a fleeting sort of happiness, which possibly is short-lived, and, and which might have lost its ability to fulfill you. And what I'm getting there is consumer things around here. I think you may have thought, I've got to have the shoes, the shoes, the shoes. I've got to have this particular phone, this particular phone. Then you get it. And then after a few weeks, you go, oh, why did I do that? Now I'm bored with it all. I'm bored. And you think something is going to make you happy, but you get bored and moved on to the next thing. Now, in a relationship setting, it can relate to a loss of pleasure in what the relationship brings, and therefore you either have to alter the dynamic of the relationship or move away from it. It's not that you're not happy, but it's that you're full, and so you, you come to the end of, of what the thing has got to offer. If you can imagine a bucket that is filled with water, and all that water in the bucket is happiness, if you pour more water into the bucket, it's not going to increase your level of happiness. You have come to the end of, of, of what can be obtained. But I'd say to yourself to, look, relax and close your eyes and breathe deeply and calmly. Let a picture arise in you which shows you in a state of complete fulfillment. And repeat this exercise often and connect this feeling more and more with your reality. And be... Be aware that life gives you all that you need to be happy. There we go. December. Your December reading. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed giving it to you. Now, don't forget, make sure you check out your 2020 yearly reading. Just search for me, Nigel 2020, in your sign and you'll get it. Uh, I, uh, I thought you were fantastic during that reading. You, you were outstanding and, uh, and, and you played your part to perfection. And really, all that uh, remind, uh, remains uh, for me to say is this, that you are a legend and I look forward to seeing you next month. Until then, bye for now.